before we get into the news, make sure to subscribe to my first and second channels and hit the notification bell to stay notified of future uploads. And follow my Instagram to get notified more frequently of MMA news before it is posted on my YouTube channel, and feel free to follow my Facebook and Twitter as well. During an interview in his home country, Russia, Khabib Nurmagomedov comments on Conor McGregor's rematch. Nurmagomedov states, I'm not ready to shake McGregor's hand right now, Nurmagomedov said. I'm not. You know everyone makes mistakes. There are no perfect people, everyone has flaws. I have flaws and so does he, everyone has flaws. When a person continues to behave this way, it means that it's in his nature. We saw that he recently hit a 70-year-old man. It shows a lack of morality and manners. His overall level. So I'm not ready to shake his hand, unless he realizes something. Apologies always have to be accepted no matter what he said, Nurmagomedov said. If a person apologizes and accepts his mistakes, we have to excuse them. Nurmagomedov then comments on Tony Ferguson's possible match. I have to say that Tony Ferguson deserves it more. You have to give him some credit. He has won a 12-fight win stake and deserves it in more than Connor, Nurmagomedov said. Connor has to come back, stop hitting old people. He is a professional fighter. He should come back, win, earn his place and get in line. Next, Joanna Yendrachik sends message to Colby Covington during an interview with James Lynch of The Score. You shouldn't shit in your gym, Yendrachik said. What Covington has done, it's like pretty shady, you know. I really do not respect that. Dot dot dot. I really don't like it because we are all teammates. It was really not nice because even if I really like Khabib, I need to and I want to stick to my people and support him, Yendrachik continued. I saw how hard Dustin Poirier was training before the fight. The gym is very big. Dot dot dot. We all are different from different cultures, different countries. We all behave differently. We all have different sense of humor. But the thing is you should support your teammates. It doesn't matter if you like them or not. We represent one team, we represent the same colors, so we should support each other as much as we can. Joanna Yendrachik has issues with Covington because of him not supporting Dustin Poirier at UFC 242. Next Ben Askren praises Israel Adesanya via Twitter, I am very critical, but some of you people are missing the boat. That style bender is a fucking superstar. Charismatic, unique, speaks well and can fight. Next John Jones gives thoughts on Adesanya via Twitter. Israel Adesanya keep convincing yourself that one day you'll be ready to face a boss like me. I'll keep convincing myself that when that day comes, I will make you my absolute bitch. John Jones wrote. You said you saw me fight in person against Tiago and I didn't look the same. I also got to see you fight KG, didn't need to be in person. You were almost knocked out on more than one occasion. John would go on to say, by the time this kid gets his confidence together he'll probably already be in the heavyweight division. I don't need to wait till 2021 to start believing in myself. Last, Joe Rogan on Robert Whitaker after loss via Instagram. This is a masterclass in humility and composure, Rogan wrote on Instagram. Robert Whitaker put it all on the line and came up short, but his response to the loss shows what kind of a man he is. Still absolutely one of the best fighters on earth, and handled the loss as well as anyone ever has. Respect.
After a recent showing of Michael Bisping's prosthetic eye on his podcast called Believe You Me, Charles Sonnen reacts on his YouTube channel. Sonnen states, how many fights have you seen boxing MMA where a guy gets his eye closed and then never goes on to win the fight? Charles Sonnen asked. How? Seeing where your opponent is is a very big deal, particularly peripheral vision. When a guy gets his eye shut, it's very rare that he ever comes back and does well. Go look at Tyson Fury's last fight. One of the reasons so many of us respected what Tyson Fury did wasn't just the push and pull struggle of that fight, it had to do with he couldn't see out of one eye. It's just a really hard thing to do. Michael Bisping went out and won a world championship, oh and by the way didn't even tell anybody. There will be another side that, oh he shouldn't have done that, he should have disclosed this to the commission, Charles Sonnen continued. I get that. I'm looking at it from the more barbaric standpoint I will admit to you, what a tough guy. Michael Bisping is a legitimate badass. And the sport has fewer and fewer of them. It's got some very good athletes and the skills have greatly improved every time. And better athletes that aren't going into the footballs and the basketballs, and the baseballs of the world, they're coming into MMA. The sport's at a real high point in that regard, but as far as the mentality of true tough guys Michael Bisping fits that bill. He is a true tough guy in and out of the cage. Next, Israel Adesanya responds to John Jones' rants about him on Twitter with John stating previously, by the time this kid gets his confidence together he'll probably already be in the heavyweight division. I don't need to wait till 2021 to start believing in myself. So, Adesanya responds and says, my confidence. Get in my fucking nuts out of your mouth. Adesanya said, via MMA mania. This guy is trying to force my hand. I'm not stupid. It's not about me not being confident. I will fuck this motherfucker up when I fight him. I just have to do what I have to do, he continued. I have to defend my belt. I just defended my belt and I am the new unified king. I have three or four more killers I have to fuck up at middleweight first. And then I will move up in weight. And then I will jump up and fuck this guy up. I plan everything from the jump. I have shown everyone that this is what I am going to do and how I am going to do it. I already said Raiders Stadium, Las Vegas in 2021, he added while pointing out that John Jones is suddenly talking about moving up to 265 pounds now that Daniel Cormier is retiring. And he is contradicting himself because he says, I think I'm all right here, at light heavyweight I'm not going to move up to heavyweight. Why do I have to go up? I don't have to fight DC at heavyweight. Now DC is retiring and now he might move up to heavyweight. Israel Adesanya said. He's just contradicting himself and trying to take my moment. You can't even fuck with me right now, dude. Look at me. Who the fuck is the new face of UFC? Do you think John Jones can ever pull some shit like that? I saw him with that bullshit as Nelly entrance when he did the electric slide. You can't fuck with me on anything. He is jealous. He sees the freshman that is fucking taking all the shine. He sees the new dog in the yard. And they're intimidated and jealous and they do not know how to act, he had it while saying at the end of the day, Jones is a fan. He's a fan and he's always been a fan. But, he just tries to do what he doesn't, just wait your turn. I'm not going to be one of these guys who doesn't defend his belt. I am going to defend my belt actively. I'm not going to be like him and fight twice a year. Let me defend my belt, then I will move up and fuck him up.
On her interview with Sirius XM, Dana White makes comments about Oscar de la Hoya. Dana White states, To me and Oscar used to be cool, right? He'd have these fights and I would literally promote his fights on my social media and I would obviously watch the fights and stuff like that. Then, we do Mayweather vs McGregor and this guy starts going out pleading with boxing fans not to watch it. I mean who does that? Just a real scumbag move. Then, as soon as the fight's over he says he wants to fight McGregor next. So the Mayweather vs McGregor was horrible for boxing but him fighting McGregor isn't. Give me a break. Then he's going to promote an MMA fight, good luck to him, anybody who wants to try and get into MMA, good luck to you, he said. But then he says, we're going to treat the athletes the way they should be treated, the UFC doesn't. He has a press conference, goes up on stage and he doesn't even know any of the fighters' names. Then the show is a complete disaster and flopped. After that, he comes out and starts lying, trying to say that it was very successful on digital. I mean I could just go on for days and days about what an absolute douche this guy is. People just don't want to chat sh asterisk t about Oscar except for me. Well you have to respect his uh, well I don't have to respect anything from this guy anymore. The stuff that you respected from Oscar de la Hoya was 10 years ago, okay? That was ancient history. The new Oscar de la Hoya is a scumbag. Next, Anthony Johnson talks his UFC return. Johnson states via Brett Okamoto's Twitter, I asked Anthony Johnson about a potential fight with Francis Ngannou, who he says is the scariest dude in the division. He says he expects to fight him but not just to get everyone's rocks off. Says that fight will be hyped and it needs to be for something special. Next Ben Askren talks his next UFC opponent. Askren states in an interview with The Score, I don't think one victory earns a title shot. I think a win against Maya puts me in a position to call out someone very highly ranked. Then if I win that fight then that would put me in position to fight for a title. That's kind of how I feel about it. For Damien, it's like, I can't dive in there on shit takedowns and then figure out how to get on top of him and beat him up, he said. I need to set my takedowns up really well, I need to execute on them and end up in a good position. The intellectual chess of that has been fun preparing for it. Frankie Edgar wants to fight Conor McGregor, he told ESPN in an interview, Edgar states, I told him I want to fight him, I told the UFC I want to fight him. But honestly, I don't think the UFC wants that fight. I don't know whether they don't want it because they don't want him to lose to me or they don't think they can build it. I don't know what it is. But ultimately, I think it's up to him. I think if he forces it, it could happen. The ball is in his court. He can make the call. Connor, if you want to do this, let's do it, baby. It's a great fight. He's coming off a couple losses, really. He needs a win. Listen, I felt like all the s he's dealing with throwing the phone, hitting the dude. He's gotten a lot of bad press. Come in and fight me, I'm not gonna talk no junk. Get a clean bill of health after me. Maybe it'll bring up his morale in a sense. Maybe that's what he's thinking, I don't know. No matter what it's gonna be a great fight. He's effing gonna sell it. I'm not gonna let him talk too much s. I've gotta say something back. Next, Justin Gaethje comments on a possible rematch between Conor McGregor and Frankie Edgar. Gaethje states on ESPN in an interview, Conor keeps saying he's going to fight but I don't think that's true. 
but if he doesn't want to fight he's calling out the likes of Frankie Edgar. No disrespect to Frankie Edgar but he's 30 pounds lighter than us and that's a coward move. The man is a coward deep down. I know that, he knows that, some of us know that. And if I fight him I get to show the world that, and that's what he doesn't want. Tony fights once a year, so he is very inconsistent, so there's a very good chance he goes away somehow. I'm there every time whenever they want me to fight. I need 8 to 10 weeks, he said. I've never turned down a fight or pulled out of a fight in my life. And I'm not saying it won't ever happen because injuries do happen. But I am consistent and feel I have earned my shot. Next, Joanna Yendrachik speaks on making weight for UFC Fight Night 161 on Instagram. Did I miss something? Did I miss the weigh-ins today or what? Cause the weigh-ins is on Friday, isn't it? Ariel Helwani responds on Twitter stating, I'm told Joanna Yendrachik had a good workout this AM and does not want the fight to get cancelled. After it was made clear Team Waterson was not interested in a catch weight, JJ has decided to do everything, within reason, to make 116. She'll be at open workout later today. Michelle Waterson, who is fighting Yendra Chikrapons to her possibly missing weight, Waterson states in her interview with Andy Whitelaw of Fox Sports Asia, that is something that my management team is working on currently. That's not something I'm focused on. I'm focused on fighting Joanna Saturday. That's my main focus. I hope she is professional enough to make the weight and put on a show for the people who come to watch Saturday, we knew it would be hard for her to make the weight coming from 125 pounds after fighting Valentina Shevchenko, putting muscle on, and not just putting on regular weight, actual muscle. With the extent from how long it's been since she's fought it's going to be rough for her. But we figured if she wanted to have the advantage of being the bigger girl that she would sacrifice and make the weight. Joanna has ever had problems making weight before, so we didn't think it'd be a problem. Now here we are. It's not my concern. It's not my concern. I can only worry about what I'm in control of and that's getting my hand raised on Saturday. It depends. I think that's the most frustrating part. Her claim to the UFC is she's the straw weight queen. If you're the straw weight queen then make straw weight weight. It's as simple as that. But yes, I would still fight her. I prepared for her. I don't think Joanna's bones are going to grow any bigger. I knew she was the bigger girl. I fought bigger girls before. MMA Fighting released a video of Conor McGregor appearing in Dublin District Court this Friday over a assault charge for pub incident or him sucker punching an older man inside a pub in Ireland. Previously, McGregor's victim spoke out to the Irish Daily Star stating, I am sitting on the bar stool just having a quiet pint with my friend then all of a sudden because I refuse his drink I get a punch, he said of his encounter with Conor McGregor. You don't need that in life. I don't like the man. I think he is getting a bad rep, the man added. He is a bit of a bully, a bully with money. Look it, I can take a punch, old man said, I'm 50, he said. And as a result McGregor is possibly facing some jail time and or a fine. Next, Dan Hardy speaks out on McGregor's match with Khabib Nurmagomedov stating on Sirius XM, there are other fights that make sense for Connor. I think the only fight that doesn't make sense for him is Khabib, that is the only one that doesn't make sense. 
he needs to have another fight before he gets a shot at Khabib. Or he just completely invalidates all of the other people in that division that is putting good win stakes together. Tony Ferguson's got to get the next fight after that Justin Gaethje is in line. I think Dustin Poirier would be a good person for him to fight. Justin Gaethje is not only a risky fight for Conor McGregor but Justin Gaethje doesn't need to fight Conor McGregor to get a title shot. I think he has done his work. Whereas with Poirier that is shot back to a title shot. There is also a story there. I also think you could coerce Conor McGregor into that fight because he already got a win over Poirier, he continued. He is going to feel confident in signing that contract again. Conor wants the quickest route back to the title because he wants the least effort for the biggest amount of money. If he has to fight someone else which is the easier fight which in his mind is likely Poirier. Cain Velasquez who is an American professional wrestler and retired professional mixed martial artist joins WWE. The news was confirmed by Mark Raimondi of ESPN. Recently, Velasquez was removed from the USA DA testing pool and from the UFC rankings. Later, Velasquez showed up at WWE SmackDown and confronted Brock Lesnar. Mark Raimondi states on Twitter, Brock Lesnar vs. Cain Velasquez and Tyson Fury vs. Braun Strowman are official for WWE Crown Jewel on October 31 in Saudi Arabia. What do you guys think? Do you think Cain Velasquez would be a good opponent for Brock Lesnar for WWE Smackdown? Let me know in the comments below. Next, Wheelish Ang gets her US visa approved after having previous problems getting her visa approved to the point where a Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard would come out and offer help. Zhang recently stated on Instagram, my American visa was refused again. I don't know why. Is it the wrong type of visa I should apply for? Or because I am a single woman? Or is the visa officer in a bad mood at work today? Zhang said. I hope this can be resolved so I can visit and get to meet some of my new friends and fans in America. We are still working on it and hope to have good news in time for me to make the trip on October 15th. Wow. Zhang wrote. I just received news from my manager that Mr. Tulsi Gubbard contacted him to try and help us. Thank you thank you Miss Tulsi. Then Wheelish Ang's manager Brian Butler issued the following statement to MMA Junkie, At this time we have been denied a visa to come here for the media tour next week. We believe that there was some miscommunication of some sort that caused red flags to raise to cause the denial. We are not quite sure what that is but we are working through the process as we speak. The UFC legal department is working on it and presidential candidate Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard also responded to me and is trying to help on her end. Lastly, Joanna Yendracek makes way to UFC Tampa way in with her weighing 115.5 pounds while her opponent Michelle Waterson weighed 115 pounds. Thanks for watching, make sure to leave a comment below of what you thought of the video, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get notified for more.